Indication. Kevzara serilumab is indicated for treatment of adult patients with moderately to severely active rheumatoid arthritis, RA, who have had an inadequate response or intolerance to one or more disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs, DMODs. Important safety information. Warning. Risk of serious infections. Patients treated with Kevzara are at increased risk for developing serious infections that may lead to hospitalization or death. Opportunistic infections have also been reported in patients receiving Kevzara. Most patients who developed infections were taking concomitant immunosuppressants, such as methotrexate or corticosteroids. Avoid use of Kevzara in patients with an active infection. Reported infections include active tuberculosis, which may present with pulmonary or extrapulmonary disease. Patients should be tested for latent tuberculosis before Kevzara use and during therapy. Treatment for latent infection should be initiated prior to Kevzara use. Invasive fungal infections, such as candidiasis and pneumocystis. Patients with invasive fungal infections may present with disseminated rather than localized disease. Bacterial, viral, and other infections due to opportunistic pathogens. Closely monitor patients for signs and symptoms of infection during treatment with Kevzara. If a serious infection develops, interrupt Kevzara until the infection is controlled. Consider the risks and benefits of treatment with Kevzara prior to initiating therapy in patients with chronic or recurrent infection. Rheumatoid arthritis, or RA, is a systemic autoimmune disease characterized by persistent inflammation, leading to joint damage and physical disability. Immune cells and pro-inflammatory cytokines, such as tumor necrosis factor alpha, or TNF-alpha, and interleukin-6, or IL-6, as well as intracellular signaling pathways, such as the Janus kinase and signal transducer and activator of transcription, or JAK-STAT, contribute to RA development and progression. TNF-alpha and IL-6 exert their inflammatory effects through activation of pro-inflammatory cytokine signaling pathways central to RA. When binding to its membrane-bound receptor, TNF-alpha primarily activates the nuclear factor kappa light chain enhancer of activated B cells, or NF-kappa-B, pathway. In contrast, IL-6 primarily activates the JAK-STAT pathway. Both TNF-alpha and IL-6 can activate the mitogen-activated protein kinase, or MAP-K, signaling pathways. These signaling features help explain both the overlapping and distinct roles that TNF-alpha, IL-6, JAK-STAT, NF-kappa-B, and MAP-K pathways play in RA pathogenesis. Persistently elevated levels of IL-6 play a direct role in inflammation and autoimmunity in RA. IL-6 acts through a dual signaling mechanism involving both a soluble and a cell membrane-bound receptor. The membrane-bound IL-6 receptor is expressed only on certain cells. The IL-6-IL-6 receptor complexes become activated when they associate with glycoprotein-130, a transmembrane receptor expressed ubiquitously on the surface of most cells. As a result, elevated levels of IL-6 have widespread effects throughout the body, modulating both adaptive and innate immune responses. IL-6 is one of the most abundant cytokines in the synovial fluid of inflamed joints in patients with RA and plays a central role in the inflammatory pathways that may lead to chronic inflammation, disease progression, joint destruction, and systemic manifestations, including anemia, fatigue, and pain. It is also important to note that systemic inflammation can be accompanied by activation of acute phase response like C-reactive protein. The ability to modulate these effects may be important to control RA disease activity. Kevzara is a human monoclonal antibody that inhibits IL-6 receptor signaling. 
Kevzara targets and binds with high affinity to soluble and membrane-bound IL-6 receptors. Thus, Kevzara helps disrupt the effects of elevated IL-6 levels in adult patients with moderately to severely active RA. Contraindication. Do not use Kevzara in patients with known hypersensitivity to cerilumab or any of the inactive ingredients. Warnings and precautions. Infections. Serious and sometimes fatal infections due to bacterial, mycobacterial, invasive, fungal, viral, or other opportunistic pathogens have been reported in patients receiving immunosuppressive agents for rheumatoid arthritis, RA. The most frequently observed serious infections with Kevzara included pneumonia and cellulitis. Among opportunistic infections, TB, candidiasis, and pneumocystis were reported with Kevzara. Hold treatment with Kevzara if a patient develops a serious infection or an opportunistic infection. Patients with latent TB should be treated with standard antimycobacterial therapy before initiating Kevzara. Consider anti-TB therapy prior to initiation of Kevzara in patients with a past history of latent or active TB in whom an adequate course of treatment cannot be confirmed and for patients with a negative test for latent TB but having risk factors for TB infection. Consider the risks and benefits of treatment prior to initiating Kevzara in patients who have chronic or recurrent infection, a history of serious or opportunistic infections, underlying conditions in addition to RA that may predispose them to infection, been exposed to TB, or lived in or traveled to areas of endemic TB or endemic mycoses. Viral reactivation has been reported with immunosuppressive biologic therapies. Cases of herpes zoster were observed in clinical studies with Kevzara. Laboratory abnormalities. Treatment with Kevzara was associated with decreases in absolute neutrophil counts, including neutropenia, and platelet counts, and increases in transaminase levels and lipid parameters, LDL, HDL, cholesterol, and or triglycerides. Increased frequency and magnitude of these elevations were observed when potentially hepatotoxic drugs, e.g. MTX, were used in combination with Kevzara. Assessed neutrophil count, platelet count, and ALT-AST levels prior to initiation with Kevzara. Monitor these parameters four to eight weeks after start of therapy and every three months thereafter. Assess lipid parameters four to eight weeks after start of therapy, then at six month intervals. Gastrointestinal perforation. GI perforation risk may be increased with concurrent diverticulitis or concomitant use of NSAIDs or corticosteroids. Gastrointestinal perforations have been reported in clinical studies primarily as complications of diverticulitis. Promptly evaluate patients presenting with new onset abdominal symptoms. Immunosuppression. Treatment with immunosuppressants may result in an increased risk of malignancies. The impact of treatment with Kevzara on the development of malignancies is not known, but malignancies have been reported in clinical studies. Hypersensitivity reactions. Hypersensitivity reactions have been reported in association with Kevzara. Hypersensitivity reactions that required treatment discontinuation were reported in 0.3% of patients in controlled RA trials. Injection site rash, rash, and urticaria were the most frequent hypersensitivity reactions. Advise patients to seek immediate medical attention if they experience any symptoms of a hypersensitivity reaction. If anaphylaxis or other hypersensitivity reaction occurs, stop administration of Kevzara immediately. Do not administer Kevzara to patients with known hypersensitivity to cerilumab. Active hepatic disease and hepatic impairment. Treatment with Kevzara is not recommended in patients with active hepatic disease or hepatic impairment, as treatment with Kevzara was associated with transaminase elevations. Live vaccines. Avoid concurrent use of live vaccines during treatment with Kevzara due to potentially increased risk of infections. New data are available on the secondary transmission of infection from persons receiving live vaccines to patients receiving Kevzara. Adverse reactions. 
The most common serious adverse reactions were infections. The most frequently observed serious infections included pneumonia and cellulitis. The most common adverse reactions occurred in at least 3% of patients treated with Kevzora and DMODs on neutropenia, increased ALT, injection site erythema, upper respiratory infections, and urinary tract infections. Drug interactions. Exercise caution when Kevzara is co-administered with CYP substrates with a narrow therapeutic index, e.g. warfarin or theophylline, or with CYP3A4 substrates, e.g. oral contraceptives or statins, as there may be a reduction in exposure which may reduce the activity of the CYP3A4 substrate. Elevated interleukin-6, IL-6 concentration, may downregulate CYP activity, such as in patients with RA, and hence increase drug levels compared to subjects without RA. Blockade of IL-6 signaling by IL-6R-alpha antagonists, such as Kevzara, might reverse the inhibitory effect of IL-6 and restore CYP activity, leading to altered drug concentrations. Use in specific populations Kevzora should be used in pregnancy only if the potential benefit justifies the potential risk to the fetus. Because monoclonal antibodies could be excreted in small amounts in human milk, the benefits of breastfeeding and the potential adverse effects on the breastfed child should be considered along with the mother's clinical need for Kevzara. There is a pregnancy exposure registry that monitors pregnancy outcomes in women exposed to Kevzara during pregnancy. Physicians are encouraged to register patients, and pregnant women are encouraged to register themselves by calling 1-877-311-8972. Use caution when treating the elderly. Advise patients to read the FDA-approved patient labeling, medication guide and instructions for use. Please see full prescribing information, including boxed warning, available at kevzorahcp.com.